الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله واتقوا الله إن الله سميع عليم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون صدق الله العظيم In the light of these ayahs we were talking about adab and respect how important it is in this deen and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching the ummah to have adab with Allah adab with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how all the teachings of Islam are based on adab and respect. In these ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first thing He's saying and He's telling us, لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله Don't get ahead of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does it mean being ahead of Allah and ahead of Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? In what? Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the order to be general. This is why he left it general also that in any matter, in anything, never be ahead of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For example, if they are walking, don't walk ahead of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is against the other. If it is time to eat, don't start eating before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is against the other. For Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la tuqaddimu bayna yadayi Allahi wa rasul. At the time of talking, don't try to put yourself ahead of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you start talking before he talks and he wanted to talk and you start talking. All of these are considered going ahead of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Sayyidina Abu Darda radiyallahu anhu who was walking in front of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu, Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu was behind him, and Abu Darda is walking in front. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Abu Darda and he said, Abu Darda, how could you walk in front of Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu, a person who's better than you in this dunya and akhirah? Teaching him the other. That you know Abu Bakr is better than you, then how come you're walking in front of him? If Allah's order is there, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ordering us of doing something. And for us to try to go ahead of them and change their orders, to put our order before their order, there is also trying to get ahead of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله واتقوا الله and fear Allah. إن الله سميع عليم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي Or you who believe Don't raise your voice over the voice of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم 
another way of adab and respect. That don't raise your voice over the voice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't make your voice louder than the voice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course the ayah applies to us also. In one situation, it would apply to us if a person is in Medina Munawwara in the Haram and over there he's talking loud. He's raising his voice over there. Raising the voice is not allowed over there because you're raising the voice in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his qabr is there. I'm sure we all have heard the story of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu when he's sitting in the masjid and he saw some people talking loud in the masjid. He called them and he asked them, where are you from? They said, from Taif. Had you been from the, the residents of this town of Medina, I would have punished you for this. Are you raising your voice over the voice of Prophet وسلم, sitting in the masjid of Rasulullah وسلم, and raising your voice? You don't have that respect for Prophet وسلم? So that's one way how this ayah would apply to us and another way. Raising our voice over his voice. That when someone would narrate a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for a person to reject that order, he's raising his voice over the voice of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, no, I think it shouldn't be like this. This is raising the voice over the voice of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's saying something and we are saying something different. When this ayah of Quran was revealed, Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een started looking at their lives, at their, started judging themselves in the light of this ayah. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, from now on I will only whisper to you. Umar radiallahu anhu, because he had a loud voice. So his intention now, he would try to speak to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in such a low voice. That many times Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to repeatedly keep on asking, what did you say Umar? Umar, I couldn't hear you. Say it again. And Umar, with the fear that he doesn't want to fall under this category of those who would raise their voice over the voice of, 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 of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would keep on repeating it but in a very low voice. Ana al sahabi whose name was Thabit ibn Qais ibn al-Shammath radiyallahu anhu. A well-known Sahabi in the history of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Sahabi extraordinary loud voice. His voice was so loud that sometime he used to go into the battlefield and getting in between the enemies, he would start just shouting loud. Because of his voice, their camels, their horses will just fall down, will sit down right away because of the loud voice that they heard. They used to either fall or they will just run away. And the people around him, they could not tolerate that voice. They will have to go away from him. This is how loud of a voice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. But when he heard this ayah, right away, his fear was, that it looks like I'm falling under those, that category of those who are raising their voice over the voice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because naturally his voice is loud. Although they know the ayah is not referring to them when they are talking in their normal voice. It's still, part of respect, they should try to lower it, but it's not referring to them really, it's referring to those who are raising their voice in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But still, these sahaba radwanullahi alayhi wa when it came to other, they were very extremely careful about it. They did not want to be disrespectful in any way. And as Muhaddisin have narrated, 
that Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een, there was no possibility for them to be intentionally disrespectful to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Occasionally someone would make a mistake and he would try to make up for it. But intentionally they would try not to be, they would never be disrespectful. So Sabit radiallahu anhu, he locked himself in a room. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't see him for the salah. So he asked, ma fa'ala thabit? Where is thabit? He was very regular for salah. No one knew. Next prayer, where is thabit? We don't know, ya Rasulullah. One of the sahaba went to his home to look for him. His wife said that he had locked himself in a room. And since he have heard this ayah, he's just sitting in that room and he's crying that he had been so disrespectful to Prophet ﷺ all of this time. Rasulullah ﷺ upon learning this, he sent some of the Sahaba to call him. When Sabit radiallahu anhu was told that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is calling you, he would not open the door for anyone. But when he was told, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is calling you, now look at the other, right away he gets him. Okay? If he's calling me, then I have to go. And he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him that Sabit, no. This ayah doesn't refer to you. And of course, it doesn't mean when you're talking in your normal voice that it's considered disrespect. To me, it's for people who are raising their voice over my voice. But still after that, he would try to just whisper in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he did not want to be a disrespectful person to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hafiz ibn Hajar rahmatullahi alayhi have narrated that a person during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one of the battlefields, he is running behind his enemy, and that kafir, as he saw that this Sahabi is getting, this person is getting very close to him, so he quickly says, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah." But this person knew that he is doing it, or thought he is doing it to save himself, to save his life, so he still continued following him, and he killed him. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam learned about the situation, he called that sahabi, he called that person, he asked him, مَاذَا تَفْعَلُ بِلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ إِذَا جَاءَ بِهَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ What are you going to do with لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ on the day of judgment? As this person is going to present that kalima against you before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the court of Allah, that Ya Allah, He killed me after I became Muslim. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, he said it only to save him his life. In that situation, he is trying to kill me first, and then when I got hold of him and I'm, I'm running after him, he says the kalima, Ya Rasulullah, is so obvious that he's saying it only to save his life. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again repeated the same thing. What are you going to do with La ilaha illallah on the day of Qiyam? Ya Rasulullah, he was doing it just to save his life. But what are you going to do with La ilaha illallah? And he says, Ya Rasulullah, if he is going to present that, then I would take care of that. <coughs> he is so sure of the situation. Of course, he is in that situation. He is so sure of it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa didn't say anything more. He just stayed quiet on this. Because he didn't want this person out of anger to say anything more now. Later on, of course, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, and this was, I think, during the Khilaf of Umar or after that, radiallahu anhu, that this person died. They buried him. The next morning, they see his body is out. They thought some of his enemies, people who don't like him, took his body out of the grave. So they had some people watching over him the next day after they buried him the second time. Next day again the body is out. So some older people sat watching over there. They said, you know, it may be that the other people who were sitting there, they were not that careful. 
So now some other people, people who are considered to be very responsible, they are sitting over there and watching over him. The third day. And again the body was out and these people didn't see anyone digging it or anything like this. And at that time, they realized that it was because of that disrespect to Prophet ﷺ on that day, that the ground, the earth is not accepting his body. Because of that bad adab, because of disrespect to the Rasulullah And finally, they took the body and put it somewhere in the mountains. Through this disrespect, it is a fact that this disrespect will make the person lose, in many cases will make the person lose more than what a person will lose through a sin. A person will commit a sin, will ask Allah's forgiveness, will get the forgiveness. But when there is disrespect, this disrespect will lead to more harms than a sin would lead in many cases. And this is why the hadith in the Sahih Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, says, Man aadali waliyan faqad aadantuhu bil harb. Hadith Qudusi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that a person who would have animosity against any of my awliya, I, Allah, declare a war against that person. <coughs> Allah declares the war against the person. <coughs> Because when the person hurts the feeling of any of awliya Allah, of course that person now, the one who's, who's seen this, this type of disrespect from you, he has that feeling in his heart. Because of that feeling in that person's heart, the person will lose a lot. And he loses so much that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, finally, of you, this person will get into a position where Allah declares a war against this person. And in the, in the light of these ayahs of Surah Al-Hujurat, Muhaddisin also have mentioned, or Mufassirin have mentioned, that the same type of adab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mentioned for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in these ayahs, it is our responsibility to observe the same adab with the scholars of Islam, ulama, because they are warathatul anbiya. They are the inheritors of anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam. So accordingly, that the, the adab that Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een used to have with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we should try to have similar type of adab with our scholars and with ulama. This is to show us the importance of adab, that how this deen is based on adab. And really, if we look at the history of Islam, how the scholars of Islam used to respect their teachers, people who know what adab means in this deen, they know how much this adab will bring and the benefits you would get out of it, and how much a person could lose because of bad adab. They had so much adab that in some cases really it's unimaginable for us. And not just unimaginable, many people as they would hear how much adab they used to have for their teachers, for their elders, people will start even having objections in their mind that this is too much, this much, this much adab is, I don't think it was required anyway. As it's well known about Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi, one day, he's sitting in the masjid and he's teaching his students. And every some time he would stand up. And then he would sit down. People really couldn't figure out what's the cause for him to stand up. And every few minutes he would stand up and then he would sit down. After the gathering was over, they asked him, that today we saw you something very surprising. And amazing that why you were standing up every few minutes. What would make you stand up? He said, you know the kids that were playing out there? One of them is the son of my teacher. So as they would play, they were playing and they would come closer to the door. 
then I would stand up as a respect for my teacher and the son of my teacher. His son is playing. <coughs> he won't even know it. And his son doesn't even know. But after all, he knows that this is my teacher's son. As an other for him, he would stand up whenever he comes closer. Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi's teacher used to live a couple of blocks away from the house of Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi. Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi says that I never face my feet towards the house of my teacher. A couple of blocks away. He says, I don't put my feet towards the direction of my teacher's house as an other for my teacher. This adab is not something that we just have to show it on people's face. That someone is coming, you open the door, now we feel that no, now he thinks that I have a lot of adab for him. This is not the thing. Adab is in the heart. It's our habit. If we don't have it in our heart, it's not going to do anything for us. Just to show off, we open the door, we do, we, okay, I'll carry this for you. This is not the everything of Adab. Adab, mainly the Adab is what's in the heart. And really it shows out. It cannot be hidden. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he immigrated to Medina Munawwara, and we all know that he is stationed at Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu's home. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose the lower level, the house who had two stories to it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose the lower level that that will be easier for him. Abu Ayyub radiallahu anhu requested Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go on the upper level. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you know, I have visitors, people come and see me, they want to talk to me, and that will make it easy for me and him that they can just walk in and come over here. If you are on the low, lower level, then every time visitors will come, they will have to ask permission to come in and then, go, and then come upstairs. So because of this, Abu Ayyub radiallahu anhu accepted to stay on the upper level, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed on the lower level. But Abu Ayyub radiallahu anhu was not satisfied. In his heart, he feels that how can I stay above Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? After spending the first night, he approaches Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again and says, Ya Rasulullah, last night me and my wife, we both couldn't sleep the whole night. They both couldn't sleep the whole night, that how could we sleep on this upper level, whereas Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is on the lower level. This is bad adab, this is disrespect. Imagine the adab in the heart. Is not just showing off. Okay, he said, stay up, so now I don't have to worry about anything. No, look at the deep adab, at the, how much adab they have for him. And in fact, this is the first time now they have met him. He just came to Medina Munawwara. It's not that after spending a lot of time, they developed that love and respect for him. This is the first time. He's in the house, they don't want to stay up. They stayed up because he said he will be more comfortable downstairs, but now they can't sleep the whole night. That we don't want to be at a place that will be just straight above Prophet ﷺ. So they're standing, trying to stay in the corner of the house. In one of the corners, some of the narrations say, they spent the whole night, both of them, they are not laying down, they both are just sitting in one of the corner of the house. They don't want to walk, that if we walk, the dust may fall on Rasulullah ﷺ. And they don't want to lay down, that we don't want to lay down at a place that is above Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They both are sitting in a corner. Next morning he explains his situation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, this was our situation last night, so please, if you accept to come upstairs. Again, he says, don't worry about them, about this situation, don't worry about it. And I'm allowing you to stay up and there and don't worry, I mean, you can... Uh, be at ease and uh, I'm more comfortable down here. 
So they accepted that and again now they're trying to stay in the corner and they don't walk. One day, they brought the jug of a water. They spilled water somehow on the upper floor. Abu Ayyub radiallahu anhu saying, right away we took that sheet that we had and we cleaned all the water to make sure it won't be dripping on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Ayyub radiallahu anhu says, that was the only sheet we had at our home. So that was their half, as we know, in the normal situation of many of the Sahaba Ridwan, Allah half of the sheet will be their mattress, the other half is like their blanket. Half down and half up. They would have only one sheet in their home. SubhanAllah, how many blankets we have at our homes? Now there is no room to put more and still we want to buy more, but we don't know where to put it. And then, we start comparing, subhanAllah, with all of this, many times, after performing two or four extra rak'ahs, we start comparing ourselves with Sahaba Ridwanullah al Really, it is our situation. That sometimes the person has stood for long in Salat al tahajjud and now the feet are tired. Today, yeah, I did something. Now he said, okay, Sahaba, when they were, when he, they did the ibadah, one of the Sahaba's hand was shining when he was walking in the dark. Now the person wants to walk in the dark to see if his hand will have a light. I will have karamat, like those Sahaba Ridwan Allah just because of one night or ibadah of one night. No, this, their, their whole life, their whole life was just something totally different. Abu Ayyub al-Sari radiallahu anhu says that whatever food we used to prepare, we would not keep anything of it for ourselves. We would send everything to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, allow him to eat first, and then we would eat from the same plate, hoping to get the barakah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is also other part of their other for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they don't want to eat before him. And they don't want to leave any food for themselves, send everything to him. And the leftover, we would eat it. And of course, that is the barakah. Uthman radiallahu anhu says, Since the day I shook my hand with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I never touched my private parts with that hand. That I don't want to disrespect that hand, because this hand have touched Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, adab with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that my, this hand will never touch my private part. How much adab these people had? And which hadith did they read? Did, which ayah told them that this is how you are supposed to have the adab? No, they learned the adab through the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the knowledge that Allah gave them, the hikmah, the wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them, they understood that this adab, this is what adab means. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he shaved his head at the time of Sulh al-Hudaybiyyah and then during the time of Umrah and Hajj, they did not allow a single hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to fall on the ground. Right away, they would take the hair in their hands and they distributed the hairs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam among themselves. They would not allow his hair to fall on the ground. Other for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we know through many of the ahadith, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would make the wudu, the water that is coming off the wudu, they are not even allowing that water to fall on the ground. To the extent, Urwa bin Mas'ud says in the hadith which is in Sahih al-Bukhari, that not only the water that is dripping from wudu, Wallahi in tanakhama nukhamatan illa saqadat fi yadi rajulim minhum, fadalaka biha wajhahu wajildah. He says, I swear by God, the situation I saw over there was this, that when he spits, whenever he would spit, it would fall into someone's hand. Someone would take it in his hand, and then he would right away apply it on his body, on his face. Taking the barakah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, Urwa bin Mas'ud at that time wasn't Muslim. But of course, he's so impressed. He's so impressed with this adab, and he realizes that this is something 
that he have not seen anywhere else in the world. This is why he goes back to his people to Quraysh and he tells them that, يَا قَوْمُ وَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ وَفَتْتُ عَلَى الْمُنُوكُ وَفَتْتُ عَلَى قَيْسَرُ وَكِسْرَ I swear by God, I have seen many of the kings and the rulers of the world. I have seen the king of the Persian and the Roman empires. I have visited them also. People make sayda for them. But only that is just to show off. I haven't seen this type of adab anywhere in the world. The adab that Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een had for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine Qaisar will spit. Do you think someone will take it on his hand? So, adab, really, they had their adab, they had their love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And through this adab and respect, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala blessed them then. According to the adab and respect, they were blessed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, did he get whatever he got because he learned more hadith or he was the first person to memorize the ayahs and he memorized it quickly or had a better memory? No. It's not because of that. It's through his adab and respect for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa his love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That love, adab, respect got them the thing that no one in the world can ever get. And of course, the levels were according to this too. It's not according to how much they have learned. Everyone recite how much you have memorized and accordingly you get this closeness. No, it's not that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sees how, how they are offering their adab and their respect for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how much they love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, many times he was seen going into the masjid of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would go to the masjid and he would put his face on the place where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to sit on the member. So he would go on the member and he would put his face on the place of Rasulullah, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to sit. As an adab for respect for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abbas radiallahu anhu, he is Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uncle. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to respect him the way we respect, or we are supposed to at least respect our parents, our father. And he used to say, Ammur rajulis wa abi. That uncle is in the place of father. Someone once asked Ab- Abbas radiallahu anhu, he is Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uncle. Someone asked him, Ayyuhum, ayyukuma akbar. Anta am Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We would use the word older in English. But in Arabic, the word akbar is used. That who is bigger? Who is big? You or Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And this is referring to age in Arabic language. As we would say, who is older? So he said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-akbar wa ana walidtu qabla. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is bigger than me and I was born before him. I was born before him, and he's bigger than me. He did not want to use the word Akbar for himself in comparison with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once Umar radiallahu anhu was going to the masjid for Salat al Jumma. It was raining that day. And Abbas radiallahu anhu's house was just in front of the door of the masjid. And he had his drain on the roof. In those days, they would not have a down spot, just the drain on top of the roof. And it was directed towards the side of the masjid. Umar radiallahu anhu coming, and the water splashes on Umar radiallahu anhu's clothing. There was some blood in it also because they had slaughtered or killed a, a chicken. So there was some blood mixed from there also. And he saw it in his clo- on his cloth. He can't go for Jummah. He's coming to leave Salat al-Jummah. Amir al-Mu'mineen coming for the Jummah. And there is blood on his clothes now. He was so upset. He got up and he took that drain out. He went back home. Changed his clothing. Came back for Jummah. Abbas was told that your drain is out. Who took it out? Umar radiallahu anhu. Okay. I'll deal with him. He goes to Umar radiallahu anhu. Why did you take this drain out? He's talking to Amir al-Mu'mineen. Why did you take this drain out? He says, because it's splashing the water towards the side of the masjid, 
and of course all the people that come to the masjid they will get this dirty water from your home is but do you know that Prophet ﷺ put it there with his own blessed hands how dare you take it out and right away Umar says oh did Rasulullah put it there I'm sorry I didn't know Abbas please do me a favor I'll sit there you get on my shoulders and put it back Abbas didn't want to be disrespectful either he says no you took it out so you need to put it up so somehow you get up there and you put it up it was because he didn't want to get on the shoulders and Umar radiallahu anhu insisted and he said, No, Abbas, no matter what you say, but you have to stand on my shoulders and put it back up. And he made him do that. Stand on his shoulders and then he put it up there. That if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa put it there, then that's it. That's everything. Then we are not looking at water splashing or this happening, that happening. We will change our clothes hundred times. But something was placed there by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I'm not going to be disrespectful. Subhanallah, you know, it's something that where we learn the other, where we learn the respect. People have no clue what other means. So, this is the other, and really through this other, Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een got all of that benefit. And if today we get our deen, we get anywhere with our deen, it will be through the other. Through the other, with Allah, with the Book of Allah, with everything that is related to the deen of Allah. And with the ulama of the ummah, with the books of the Islam. This is why in our classes, the first thing we have to teach our students that make sure you have other even for your books. These are not just the normal books, you know, after class, throw them away. No, other for the books. And we know there is no time. Uh, I'm sure we all have heard so many stories that there were people. They were totally on the wrong direction of the life. Because of giving respect to the name of Allah, someone would find an, a piece of paper with the name which says Bismillah rahman rahim He would take it and put it on a respectable place, on a higher place. Because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him so much that he became one of awliya Allah until the day of Qiyamah people will remember his name. There were not one or two, there were many of them. Through this adab, adab with the name of Allah, the person sees that this is the name of Allah. And it's on the ground, no, this is disrespect. With all the crimes he's doing, with all the sins he's doing. But still he has adab for Allah and for Allah's name. No, I can't see Allah's name over here on the ground. He picks up the paper and he puts it up. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this adab blessed him so much that he became one of the awliya Allah. So adab really will get us. And this is why I said that sometime because of disrespect, people lose more than what they would lose because of sins. And through this good adab, a person could get something that is unimaginable. It's through the adab and respect. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this true adab and true respect for Allah and for the deen of Allah. ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَظْلِمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَخْوَ الْقُلُوبِ Whoever will respect شَعَائِرَ الله. What is شَعَائِرَ الله? All the signs that are showing that this is something attached to the deen of Allah. Masajid شَعَائِرَ الله. Quran, of course, one of the highest of Sha'airullah. Beard is of Sha'airullah. Hijab of a woman is Sha'airullah. And how we see people disrespecting it nowadays. Our own people. One is a person doesn't have it, doesn't do it himself. But people, how many of our own people will talk against hijab, against the hijab of women? Why do they have to cover it up this way? It scares people, it does this. It does. This is Sha'airullah. And there is no other for Sha'airullah. That's it. Everything is gone. Everything is gone. Look at the ayahs when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hujurat says, لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي Don't raise your voice over the voice of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض And don't speak in a normal voice, in a louder voice to him, the way you talk to each other. Don't even talk in that way, the way you talk to each other. That we call each other with our names and we... Uh, call each other and uh, if we are at a distance we will uh, raise the voice to uh, make the person hear it no Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala says don't do this to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if you do this there is a great fear that you will lose all of your good deeds 
All the reward is gone. All of your salah, fast, ibadah, everything will be gone. Because of this disrespect. Because disrespect, as uh, scholars have explained, that disrespect could lead all the way towards kufr. Because of disrespect, the person will, will, will keep on going. If a person will have bad adab, he will just keep on going low and low and low. And depending how low he gets and how much the, uh, bad respect he have and bad adab he has, it could lead all the way up to kufr and tahbata amalukum. All of your good deeds will be washed away. It's because of bad adab. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us adab with Allah, with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the book of Allah, with the deen of Allah, with the masajid and the houses that are the houses of Allah. And as we disrespect our masajid, then we go to Mecca and Medina. And, when, and then we start complaining that those people have no respect for the Kaaba. They don't have respect for the Haram. They don't have respect for the Masjid of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are doing the same thing to our masajid. And for them, they are their masajid. So they deal with their masajid the day we, we, we deal with our masajid. Although those places deserve higher respect, but still, we don't have other than we see the same thing over there, then we complain. No, they are the same people. They are doing what we are doing to ourselves and our masajid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the right understanding of deen and the right adab with the deen of Allah and with the people of the deen. And people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قول أولياء الله أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب